Youth to Kill movie review. So this is actually a Japanese movie, uh, and the Japanese title is uh, Seishun no Satsujinsha, which uh, I rented this movie when I was in Japan, and the DVD translated it as Youth to Kill. I'm actually, I don't think that's the translation I'm going with, because that's what was on the DVD title, but I don't think that's the best translation. In fact, uh, I was Googling this movie just now, and uh, it seems to be coming up on Google or IMDb as The Youth Killer. Uh, I think it actually sounds better as The Killer Youth, because it's, it's about a young person who uh, ends up becoming a killer. Uh, I, I, if you sound like The Youth Killer, it makes it sound like something that's killing youths. I don't know. The, the point being, I guess, the English translation of this is kind of in some debate, maybe. Um, I came across this when I was living in Japan. I, I would kind of wander around the DVD store, kind of looking for movies that looked interesting to try and practice my Japanese out on. Uh, and I was, I, I was always interested in kind of the older retro stuff. Uh, like, I listened to a lot of old Japanese music, I kind of sought out a lot of older uh, Japanese movies, uh, and I had a bit of a historical interest in the Japanese student movements of kind of the late 1960s, which I've actually done several videos on, so I'll link to that down below. I won't repeat myself here. Um, but this video kind of, this movie ties in with that a little bit. This movie came out in 1976, so it was after kind of the peak of the, the student movement. Uh, the student movement had kind of died down by that time, uh, as it did in the U.S. Um, but there was still kind of this baby boomer generation. Uh, actually, jumping back, uh, so you, we talk about the baby boomers in the U.S., but the baby boom was actually a global phenomenon. So in many countries like Japan, you had like this huge surge of young people uh, kind of moving through the demographic uh, age groups. And uh, because of that, uh, there are a lot of songs and movies from the 1960s and the 1970s in Japan that have kind of the word youth or young people in them. I, I mean, the Japanese word seishun or wakamono. Uh, in fact, <laughs> one of my Japanese friends said to me, she says, oh, whenever you see the word youth or young people in a, in a song, you know that only old people listen to that song uh, because, you know, it had, been, it had been popular in the 1960s or something. Uh, and she said it to me without even seeming to realize the irony of it, that only old people listen to songs about young people. Uh, but, yeah, for what that's worth. So anyways, uh, this movie uh, is in 1976, so the baby boomers are kind of in their mid-twenties at this point. Uh, and this movie is about a young man in his mid-twenties who kills his parents after having an argument with them. And I think it's supposed to be symbolic of the generational conflict. Uh, there was actually, there was a hippie activist in the US in the 1960s, a guy named Jerry Rubin, who at one point famously said, go home and kill your parents. Uh, in this movie, uh, Jerry Rubin, uh, most people think he wasn't being literal. It was just a form of rhetoric. Um, but I almost wonder if the Japanese people who made this movie uh, had kind of heard that quote at one point. And uh, well, I don't know. Maybe they had, maybe they hadn't. But it seems to be like a literal interpretation of that admonition to kind of go home and kill your parents as like a physical embodiment of the generation gap. So the murders happen right at the beginning of the film, um, but then after the murders, we get flashbacks, which kind of give more detail about the relationship between the parents and the son. Uh, and uh, here in these flashbacks, we do get hints of the Japanese student movement, which uh, was big in the late 60s. Uh, the, the son, in one of the flashbacks, kind of thinks to himself in the voiceover, Back then, Japan was a much more interesting country, and then it shows some brief 
clips of the student movement. Uh, another scene, the father apologizes to the son for forbidding him from going to college. So in this movie, the father had not allowed the son to go to university. And the father said, you know, I saw the violence on the news and I thought it would continue. You know, the violence in the Japanese universities in the late 60s. And the father says, I was wrong. Um, which indicates, you know, like there was this brief period where the student movement really flared up in Japan around 68, 69. Uh, and then it seems to have very quickly flared out again, uh, as it did in a lot of countries. Uh, there were a couple pockets where kind of the student protests and the student movement stayed alive. Uh, one of them were the protests around Narita Airport in Tokyo. Uh, and sure enough, those get alluded to in this movie. Uh, the, at one point, they're kind of uh, going close to Narita and they have to pass through a police checkpoint because the police are kind of checking everyone who might be going over there to protest. Um, but yeah, by and large, this movie takes place in the 1970s, kind of well after the student movement has finished. Um, I mentioned before that the, the, uh, the son killing his parents does seem to be kind of a metaphor about generational conflict. And actually, I said seems to be, but that, that does seem, the movie, the movie hits that pretty hard, actually. Uh, to the extent that we even find out that when the son was in high school, he and his classmates made movies about fighting and killing their parents and teachers. So the, 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 that's a pretty obvious allusion to the fact that this uh, metaphorical generation conflict has become literal in this movie. And yet, the main character, the son, uh, the one who ends up kill, who kills his parents at the beginning, he doesn't seem to be set up as like the ideal spokesman for his generation. Uh, he seems to be more of a disturbed mental case. Uh, he's moody, he quarrels with everyone. I mean, I suppose somebody who kills their parents is by definition kind of not very mentally help healthy. Uh, but you, you do, I'm not quite sure what this movie's going for. Uh, is he meant to be representative of his generation or is he just meant to be a very disturbed individual? It actually, it might well be the latter. I might be reading into this by kind of reading in all these generational themes. Uh, he did kind of remind me a little bit of James Dean, you know, in Rebel Without a Cause, just kind of this moody melancholiness. And there's also a girlfriend in the movie. Uh, the girlfriend is actually very important to the plot, at least at the beginning, because she's the whole cause of the quarrel that ends up uh, with the son stabbing his father. Uh, the parents disapprove of the girlfriend. But then after that happens, she seems really to serve no more point to the plot. She's just kind of constantly attached to her boyfriend. She's whining constantly. Uh, and she takes a lot of abuse from him. Uh, but just w whatever he does to her, she just kind of stays by her side. This seems, I don't know. I'm going to get myself in trouble here because I haven't studied enough Japanese film to say this definitively, but the Japanese media I have seen, I'm getting the impression that this is a little bit of a trope, like this is often how women are, girlfriends are portrayed in these, these, these movies as just kind of uh, always taking kind of whatever abuse and just sticking by their man regardless, which I doesn't seem healthy to me, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm being unfair. Anyways, uh, I'll finish it out here. Uh, if you ever come across this movie, it's interesting. Uh, I know I've been complaining about a lot of stuff, but worth checking out if you come across it, I guess.